This video is gonna be brought to you by G Fuel and I'm extremely excited to tell you guys that G Fuel has now gone Sage Mode for the first time ever with the first G Fuel Naruto Sage Mode hydration tub, the very first Naruto flavor in the hydration line. You guys know that I've said in the past that I'll drink G Fuel for a quick boost of energy to get the morning started when I'm working on content. But what makes the hydration line different is the Naruto Sage Mode tub has zero caffeine, zero sugar, and zero calories, but it's packed with all all those important vitamins and electrolytes and most importantly it tastes amazing up until now the only things i've tried from g fuel have been their energy drinks and their protein puffs but after trying the hydration tub i strongly recommend it to you guys because it has that grapefruit white peach flavor that slaps as hard as damon stomped out code use my link down in the description box and the pinned comment to get yours today and use my discount code kage for your discount again go to gfuel.com or use my affiliate link and use my promo code kage in order to get your discount thank you again to g fuel for partnering with me on today's video yo what's going on everybody it's your boy naruto explain here bring you guys another board to two blue vortex discussion today i wanted to talk to you guys about a rather heartbreaking reveal that we got in the latest boruto manga chapter which is the rather messed up confirmation that boruto's life will never be the same ever again following the omnipotence being casted way back in boruto naruto next generations now longtime viewers of the channel know that this was something that we said here when momoshiki broke down how omnipotence worked and boruto and ada pieced together the rest of the information which we broke down in an easy to understand fashion in the omnipotence explained video which i'll leave links in the description box or anyone still confused on how this particular shinjutsu works and why things like boruto's academy records and photos of baby boruto didn't make people go kawaki's lying but maybe it's because people were holding on to hope that there would be some rosy loophole to omnipotence but there were those who thought that this would have a very simple counter to it but in the latest boruto manga chapter boruto doubles down on the dark reality of its truth and it's something that just reading the comments in the comment section of the chapter review a lot of you guys were very upset and troubled by this omnipotence erased everyone's memories and rewrote them into a reality that kawaki wanted and as boruto tells shikamaru due to how the effects of the shinjutsu itself operates it's pointless trying to figure out how it's done and its effects because gradually over time omnipotence will make the person stop trying to forcibly fight the effects of, of the paradox that they're feeling which is what sasuke told us even after he was made aware of what happened and he saw with his own eyes that boruto looked just like naruto had momoshiki's chakra and soul inside of him had sasuke's headband had the scar over his eye all things that sasuke associated with kawaki and sasuke still said he had trouble believing that his memories have been altered and that he was scared he couldn't trust his own memories and that over time things that should bother him about the situation they bothered him less and less boruto was able to tell shikamaru with extreme confidence that shikamaru will undergo a similar process because he'd seen it firsthand with his own master sasuke he even pointed out to him that sarda had been telling him repeatedly for the past three years that this is all wrong and as sarda tells us in chapter one of boruto 2 blue vortex early on shikamaru was one of the most skeptical of kawaki after everything that had happened and that stays in line with shikamaru's character he never trusted kawaki from the jump if kawaki would have been at shikamaru's mercy shikamaru would have had that boy locked up as soon as naruto brought him to the village he questioned why kawaki had ishiki's karma still in chakra instead of momoshiki's he questioned why was kawaki a cyborg in possession of a mechanically altered body when naruto's son was never made into a cyborg like amato the only thing naruto's son might have had slipped into him was one too many thunder burgers and some intrusive private thoughts by miski in the process sarda even tells us that after they passed out photos of baby boruto with naruto hinata over time people they just stop questioning why was naruto holding a baby boruto they still went that's cool but naruto's son is kawaki that's why boruto told shikamaru in the chapter that he needed shikamaru to just trust him when he says that he and kawaki switched places and to do so without any solid proof basically to do what sasuke did which is ignore his own memories and just jump out on faith to believe what happened the same way that sasuke believed in his daughter's passionate plea in the same way that amato chose to ignore his own memories and trust his instincts because he saw his ninja tech was in kawaki's body 
he saw his daughter's DNA was in Kawaki's coma seal. Both of those men, they defied omnipotence in their own ways by just accepting the truth. Their memories have been altered and they treated it day by day to suppress that urge to accept what their minds were telling them was the truth. They fought against it in their own way. The reason why this is different this time than all the other times that Sarda tried beating Shikamaru over the head, telling him the truth, Shikamaru put the pieces together himself, just as Ada told Sarda in chapter one of Boards of Two Blue Vortex. You have to give up on the idea of the concept of trying to convince people that a change occurred, that they can't trust their own memories. You have to allow them to come to that realization on their own by giving them new memories and information that they can draw on upon themselves and come to their own conclusions. However, as Boruto said, there is no reversing what happened. Their memories are going to remain their memories of Kawaki being the kid who helped save the village from Momoshiki and was viewed as the second coming of Minato, the fourth Hokage that everyone had been waiting on. While it's heartbreaking to think that Boruto's being chased from his home, chased away from his family, and still finds himself with the compassion to not give in to what would be a perfectly normal urge to find Kawaki, force and unseal Naruto, beat the brakes off of him in the process and ultimately do what Shikamaru said he would do if he was in board a situation which is kill Kawaki. It's something I think most of us would do if we were bored so even if we risked our parents coming out of the Daikokun dimension having no memory of them being our parents and us being a stranger in their eyes we still want to save them we still want to make Kawaki pay in blood for what it is that he's done regardless as to whether or not Kawaki believed he was justified or not now there's a rather interesting panel that was dropped in that a lot of people have zeroed in on which is the panel that shows Naruto sealed away and we have the text bubble of Boruto saying that Kawaki sealed dad away in order to protect him so there's no point unless he's satisfied and undoes it himself otherwise he's just bound to do it again I personally am not ready to say that this is double speak for the reversal of omnipotence just prior to that statement Boruto was saying that under the context of their memories would stay altered and even if you could reverse it the issues between himself and Kawaki wouldn't be resolved he was saying their issues needed to be resolved before they even went the route of trying to find a way to, to reverse omnipotence if there was even a possible way to do so because otherwise the underlying issues that led to Naruto being sealed away and Kawaki casting omnipotence in the first place wouldn't get resolved. It would just be history repeating itself otherwise if they found a way to reverse everything but the stuff that led to the mess they're in hadn't been addressed yet. Which is why Boruto taking the compassionate approach of trying to resolve things with Kawaki first is the correct call even though that's an unpopular call you guys have heard me say this a few times already before but over the last two years i've been screaming at the top of my lungs that boruto's story is giving me vibes of samurai 8 the series that masashi kishimoto wrote and a series that etro oda approved on when kishimoto was writing it which is the story itself has been altered to fit into the confines of the naruto story and fit the story that boruto is telling think of it like a remix to a song the bones of the original is still there, but it's been twisted around to be its own thing for all intents and purposes. The first physical volume of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex adds into that belief of mine, where the narrator notes in the reveal to us that the divine power that dwells inside of Ada Omnipotence was a fate altering reversal that can only be properly willed by the god of the Otsutsuki himself. It's a power that turns thoughts and ideas into reality. Thus, it's too much for Ada to control herself because as Momoshiki said in Board to Naruto Next Generations, a power like that is beyond the control of a teenage girl, regardless of the enhancements that Amado made to her body. It was this power that Shiba used to create the Naruto world as we know it, which is why Momoshiki said to Boruto, has he ever wondered how many times mankind has had their memories altered by omnipotence before? Momoshiki basically tells us this was not the first time that it was used and it probably won't be the last time either. That lines up with stuff from Samurai 8. Again, it's twisted around to fit the stuff that's going on in the Naruto world. The god of that Samurai 8 universe transcended the samseric cycle of life, death, and rebirth, just as Shiba Otsutsuki has done in Boruto's story. That god came from another universe and created the universe of Samurai 8. Shiba is implied to have created this universe. That god was the cause of Forbidden Powers, Pandora's Box, which can save the universe by using the seven samurai keys and the opposite of Mandela's box, which has that destructive tool that is capable of wiping out the entire universe. In that story, after Hachimaru ascends beyond life and death and the implied love interest and princess that Hachimaru was supposed to be protecting, 
offers up her prayers, then possesses the power to alter her body. And there's some stuff going on with Hachimaru and Hachimaru messes with the flow of time and space itself, transcending beyond the fourth dimension where he's capable of existing in the universe without the need of a physical body, much like Shibai. And as a result of that sacrifice in the prayers, we end up getting the result of the story being a bittersweet ending. Boruto has been giving off vibes to Hachimaru, the samurai destined to have a bigger purpose beyond his own life and was given the duty of protecting a princess of all costs. Hachimaru, Anne, and Anne's brother can all be swapped out with Boruto, Sarada, and Sasuke as her father, and Sarada as a heiress to the Uchiha clan instead of being a princess, since the Uchiha clan is one of the four noble clans of Konoha, and she is the only child of Sasuke. Boruto's power can be a representation of Pandora's box, and the seven samurai keys, Kawaki's power and omnipotence can be a replacement for the Mandela box. There are tweaks made to everything, but Shibai does give off Fudo Muyo vibes, and there's something more there. Boruto getting to a point where he no longer needs a body, like Hachimaru and like Shibai, there's something there that can be had with Boruto's situation. I get it, it's very heartbreaking to think that Boruto doesn't get an easy fix to this whole situation. And if we continue to see Samurai 8 parallels continue, the ending is going to end up being a bittersweet one for Boruto and I get people want Boruto's life to just go back to normal. Everyone hugs Boruto. He eats his Thunder Burgers. He gets to shoot some craps and everything, play some dominoes. But the path that he's been forced to take is one that I think fits his journey perfectly and what Boruto wants his endgame to be. He was someone who wanted to protect the village from afar and the threats that the village is facing, that the ninja world is facing, is gone well beyond that whole fear of ninja versus ninja. There are celestial beings at play here. There are celestial deities and powers at play. Protecting the village as Shadow Hokage by extension is going to lead to Boruto taking things further than his own sensei Sasuke did. Sasuke made the sacrifice to explore other dimensions at the expense of being with his family. Boruto, I think, I think the fans need to prepare themselves for the possibility that all of his trials and tribulations right now with the omnipotence where he's being forced to be isolated, they're preparing him for a bigger destiny at the end of the series. Just as Hachimaru's tale led to him with what happened following his battle with Ada one of the last battles that you had in the series. That was a very bittersweet ending. One could even say it's a bit heartbreaking. And I do think that, again, there are parallels with Boruto and Sarada, with Hachimaru and Anne, and some of the things that are going on, especially with Sasuke saying that he thinks both of them will be needed to undo omnipotence. I do very strongly believe we're going to get a, a bittersweet ending when it comes to the end of Boruto's story. I don't think that this is going to be a traditional happy ending. I think this would be bittersweet, like Kishimoto won it with Samurai 8 and like how you had with Rave Master, a series that Hiro Mashima drew before Fairy Tale that for a today's equivalent would be a little bigger than Black Clover, but smaller than My Hero Academia. I'll go further in depth with a Boruton Hachimaru video that I'll probably drop in the next few days because it's something I've wanted to do for a while now. But after this last chapter and all the death flags we've gotten, I definitely am gonna make that video. However, in the meantime, click here to watch this video explaining in depth everything about omnipotence you might've missed or overlooked.